Hello and welcome to part two of this video tutorial series from BlenderCookie.com on modeling a shipping container. Picking up in part two here, we're going to go ahead and start back where we left off. And in this case, we're going to primarily focus on modeling the, the door panels and then kind of polishing off a couple of the other areas and making some adjustments to the mesh that we've already done. Now, we probably not going to be able to get all the way through it in this section, so we'll probably follow up with a part three so that we can really get down to some really nice detailing. But let's go ahead and to help the modeling process, if you remember, we don't really have a lot of of direct uh, direct references, you know, direct front views, side views, etc. But I want to go ahead and pull in the reference that we have of the door panels to really just show, you know, allow us to model very easily. And so I'm just going to hit N to bring my properties panel and scroll down to the background images and then I just want to go and add in an image and then open one up and in this case I'm going to pull in the shipping1.jpg and I'll pull it in and let's go ahead and just scale it down so it's approximately the right size move it up along the Y axis scale it down just a bit more somewhere right about in there move it over along the X axis and in this case so that we can just work quite easily, I'm going to actually move it over to just beside it. And then we'll pull this down along the Y. We'll go ahead and take the size down just a bit more. And that looks pretty close right about there. So this will be a pretty good reference that will allow us to model this fairly accurately and also make some adjustments. Number one, let's go ahead and remove the, the reference cube that we, do, we added to give ourselves a reference for the dimensions. And I'm also going to hide the empty here, which is controlling one of the array or mirror modifiers. And we're just going to hit H to hide that. Now let's go ahead and do some adjustments. Namely, I want to go ahead and first work with our, our side cubes here. You'll notice that they're not nearly big enough. And so let's just grab these edges here. And this is the edges of the bottom of the cubes, and in this case the top, and then the, the ends of our um, corner pillar. And we're just going to hit S, Z, and then scale down to about right there. And then we also want to select the cubes. Whoops. And actually, we need to undo, <clears throat> excuse me, undo our scaling, because we were actually scaling towards the 3D cursor. So we'll just hit comma on our keyboard after undoing. This way we're scaling around the... Uh, the bounding box center. So I'm going to just hit S and Z and now that will scale appro appropriately. And then let's select both our cubes, deselect, and we just select those by um, tapping L while we're hovering over them. And then we're going to hit B and middle click and drag to deselect the left or the right side. And then zooming in here so that we can get some minor grid units, let's just hit G and, and hold down control and move this out about two units. And now if we move this over, we can see that that's approximately the right size. So now we want to do those same two units from the side view. And so I'll just do the same selection, zoom in for the minor grid units, and then pull them over two units just like that. And then actually on the side here, we need to go ahead and do the same thing with our, our long pillar. So we'll just slide that in. And then from the side view, let's go ahead and do the same thing because we're actually going to uh, adjust this a little bit differently for the front one, but the back one, we want to maintain the same scale. So I'm gonna first go ahead and I'm gonna turn off my, my background grid. There we go. I really just need to set that to my default settings, but I continuously forget. So what I wanna do now is to go ahead and <clears throat> I'm going to disable the, the x-axis mirroring for a second, or excuse me, the y-axis mirroring, and then I'm going to Shift D to duplicate this. And then I'm going to hit period to scale around the 3D cursor. And then I'm going to hit S, Y, and negative one to flip that around. And the reason that I wanted to create a duplicate of that was so that now I can modify this front one without affecting the back one. Because this front one, you'll notice, is very, very thin. And so let's just zoom in here and then move this out to about right there. Or maybe that's a little bit... Well, actually, that's pretty close. So since so we're still in the grid units, we'll just go ahead and leave that just like that. Okay. Now let's go ahead and let's add in this top plate right here. And so we can do this pretty e <clears throat> excuse me, 
pretty easily. And we're just going to add it into this same mesh here. And the way that I'm going to do that is just by selecting these two edges right here. And then I'm, or this one edge, I'm going to shift D to duplicate it. And I'm going to hit G and X and pull it over to right about here. And then I'm also going to take it down just a little bit about there. And then let's go ahead and deselect the top vertex by hitting B, middle click and dragging. And then take this down a couple notches right about there so that it will overlap this door panel. Then let's select that whole edge by just tapping L with our mouse over it, and we'll hit E to extrude, and just take that right into the center. And then something I want to do, <clears throat> excuse me, I also want to add in another edge loop, and take it in right about there, and this way we can add in the edge going down the way, so we'll just extrude this down, take it down to right about there, and we want to just go ahead and take this all the way down, and then if we go ahead and look at this, we can see that we line it up right about there, and so we'll do the exact same thing down here. Or actually, whoops. So that was, um, this is three minor units below that. And so we'll just zoom out, zoom right in, take it down there, and then up three. And then we'll extrude it, take it down. And in this case, we don't have to go down as far because we've got this bottom plate that's already there. And so as long as we're crossing that, we'll be okay. Take it down one more, then let's select this edge, and we'll extrude that into the center. If we enable clipping, we can take that right in, and then make sure we did the same thing on the top. There we go. Okay, so that's creating the, the front plate there. Now, while we're at it, <coughs> let's go ahead, <coughs> excuse me, my throat's getting, I'm still recovering from a cold, so I'm still a little stopped up. Let's go ahead and select this plate, and we're going to pull it up along the, the y-axis about halfway, so that it's about halfway in between this, because then we're going to take this top edge here, and we're going to extrude it back to the back here, and then we'll go ahead and uh, we actually want to take this all the way up to here, and then take that in, and then we'll extrude this down such that we get that effect there. Because this way, we'll be able to, after we apply the array modifier, which we're not going to do yet because we're going to wait until we add in the extra geometry, we'll then be able to fix this very easily. Now I want to go ahead and move on and just go ahead and create the basic door panels. This will start to give us a good idea of the overall shape. And so I'm just going to hit Shift A, add in a new plane object. On this plane object, before we go into edit mode, let's go ahead and move it along the Y axis right to the front here and then we'll move it back in to right about there and then let's hit tab to go into edit mode and we'll take it up along the z-axis take it up to well, let's see we want to go right up to this bottom ridge which will be right about there okay and let's go ahead and take it let's add in a mirror modifier so we'll hit control R to add in a central loop then we'll select that, hit X, delete vertices, and we'll add in that mirror modifier. We can see there. And then I want to go ahead and take it up the top to fit to right about there will be just about perfect. And if we alt right click to select this right edge, we can take it into right about there. So again, we're, you know, we can shoot see our edges right here to about where we want to be in reference to the the corner cubes and that looks just about right let's go ahead and so that the door is setting out from this panel let's go and hit control l which will select everything that's linked to our current selection and let's just take this out uh, one unit right about there this way as soon as we add some depth which we'll do here in a little bit it will work just perfectly now I want to go ahead and let's separate out the door panels here uh, so that it's not locked to the center. So we'll select this. You'll notice that one door actually has an overhang that will be the door that shuts second, but we'll add that in after we're done doing the preliminary modeling because that's something that'll be real easy to do then. So we're just going to take this in to about halfway here, right about there. So it's like half a unit from the inside edge. Now I want to go in and let's add in a loop that along the left side 
that will be this edge, and then one along the right side, that will be the edge on the other side. And we can see that lines up pretty much right with this, and so let's just take that in a little bit further to right about there. And then on the inside edge, we'll go and take this in a little closer just so they're a bit more even about like that. Now what I want to do is I'm going to add in uh, first, well let's see, if we do four loops, then we'll be able to add in two more loops in the center of each one of these. Again, that's just control R and scroll up. And then we can go ahead and delete those center loops and we've now placed loops almost exactly where we want them to be. And I think I deleted those in the wrong order. Okay, here we go, I wanna delete this one. Then I'll delete this one. Then I'll remove this one here, this one here, excuse me, no. This one right here, and then this one. So now we have those three panels very easily where we can just go into face mode, select each of these panels, and then we'll just go into side view, hit E to extrude when we zoom in, and then we can go ahead and change this over to the individual origins. It's just if we hit S and Z and scale these down, they'll each scale independently of each other. So in front view, let's just scale these down to right about there. So I'm holding down control and just going in two units. So then we have those created very, very easily. And so this is setting up our door panels pretty well. Um, just so that we can really see things kind of blocked out, let's now go ahead and add in the, the basic hinges. So on the hinges, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this mesh here. I'm gonna hit Shift S and cursor to selected. And then I'll hit, or actually no, I don't wanna do that. I wanna reselect the door. Shift S, cursor to selected. Then we'll hit Tab to go into edit mode. Um, yeah, no, we will do this as a separate object. So in object mode, apologies for the confusion, we'll go and hit Shift A, add in a mesh and a cube. On this cube, we'll hit Tab to go into edit mode. Let's scale it way down. We'll switch back in vertex mode by hitting Control Tab. And let's just move this over, holding down Control. And we can see that this first one will be placed right about here. Let's go ahead and line this up. If we just hit uh, Enable Snapping by hitting Shift Tab, and then just hit G and X, we can then just go ahead and actually hit Control Shift Tab to change the snapping over to the edge, or you can snap it over here. And if we hit G and X, we can then just go ahead and snap right to one of these edges and speed up that process. Then we can go ahead and we'll just shift tab to turn that off and we'll just move this down to be right about there. Let's go ahead and scale down along the Z axis, move this down, scale down along the Y axis. And if we look at our reference here, we can see this is same depth or same width as the edge of this. And so first I'm gonna hit um, G, Y, hold down control and snap it right to this edge. And then we can go ahead and see that it's about the same width as our cubes here. So hit G, X, and then snap right to that. So I'm just holding down control to enable the snapping. And we'll go ahead and select these two edges and just snap them along the Y axis right to that edge, which is the, the door. Oh, no, we want this edge right there. No, this one. Yeah, that one. There we go. Okay, now I wanna go ahead and we'll just take this edge in along the Y axis to be right about there, so it's pretty thin. You know, it's just kind of got a welded border right around there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch into ink back to increment mode, select everything, hit Shift D, and actually, no, I'm going to um, delete that for the time being because what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to hit tab to go into edit mode or uh, object mode. I'm going to add in a mirror modifier and then I'm going to hit alt D and move this up along the increment at each point such that I'll then be able to go and edit just one of these and all of them will be duplicated. And actually I think I hit shift D rather than alt D. Well, no, that's interesting. Okay, I'm not sure exactly what's going on. So instead, we'll just go ahead and use an array modifier on this, and we'll take it up along the, the Z axis. I'll just turn that to zero, and then take this up. 
our offset is wrong right now, so let's hit Control A, apply the rotation, because this should go up along the Y axis. And I'm going to go back to the, the no units just to make it a lot easier to work with. Um, you know, we use the imperial system, or you could use the metric system in the beginning, just honestly for good measure. But since we don't have the exact measurements of anything else now, um, it's more effective actually. Whoops. It's more effective to just use things like snapping and just making things approximate on something that we don't have the exact measurements for than for trying to use the measurement system. So now we've got those arrayed up just perfectly. And we can go ahead, and if we look in here closely, we can actually see how these are constructed. And in fact, let me just go ahead and pull in another reference that is a little more accurate. Here we go. So we can see this one right here. And the way that it's constructed basically is we have kind of this cube here that then is extruded up here. And let me just maximize this and go back. And so you can see it's a cylinder around here. And so from the top view, we can kind of, I'll show you kind of how it's done. Uh, if we just enable grease pencil, it's drawn kind of like there's about a circle right here. And of course, I'm drawing with a mouse right now, so apologies for the rough, rough, rough shape. And then this shape comes out, this comes down, and this keeps coming down, and then goes through here, through, and then back up. So that's basically the shape that we're looking for. And so I'll just remove that real quick by holding down D and then right clicking. And so let's go ahead and go back into edit mode on this. And we're going to move this over. We're going to take this over to about right there. And then we will add in a new edge loop right there, to which then we can then just extrude this out, switching back to edge snapping, extrude it out to right there. And then what I want to do is we will then just go into top view, extrude this out to that edge right there. And then eventually, once we add in subdivision surface modifiers to all of this, we will actually round this off and put a hole in it. But for the time being, let's not worry about that, because what I want to do instead is work on this piece. And we need to go ahead and add in a bunch of loop cuts here, which if we go ahead and add in, use the same technique as before, where we add in, in this case, uh, that is six loop cuts, which then enables us to very easily go in, add in two right here, and maybe just G and Z, pull them down to right about there, add in two there, pull these down, and in fact what we might do is go ahead and use edge snapping, so we'll hit G, Z, snap it to there, select this top one, snap to there, and then we'll do the same thing here. We'll be able to adjust the, the spacing differences at any point if we want. And so this is really where snapping becomes very, very helpful, is doing things like this. And something to make snapping more accurate to ensure that you're not causing a lot of problems as you go along, do be sure to just snap to only the axis that you want. Uh, then we'll go ahead and add in another loop along this direction, which will then just snap right up to that edge there. And so by just snapping to the y-axis, I'm able to ensure that I'm not adding in any extra dimensions. I'm going to remove these in-between edge loops by just alt-right-clicking on them and deleting the edge loop. And unfortunately, we have to do this an edge loop at a time, but that's okay. You know, it's very, very quick when we really look at it. Okay, we'll save that file. Now we want to, what I want to do is go back in here and let's go in and just delete these faces. And so if I go into face mode, I can do this a little bit easier, where I'll just select these faces, select these faces, and then select these faces and hit X and delete faces. And now what I need to do is I'm going to go into edit mode and go to control tab, vertex mode, and actually edge mode will be faster, where I want to first select these two top edges, hit F to create a face, then these two middle ones, fill a face, and then these two and fill a face. Then what I'll do is select all three edges here, or all three faces here, and I'm just going to stay in edge mode, or in edge snap mode, hit shift D, move it up along the Z axis, then zoom in and just snap it to right there. And then it looks like I forgot to snap one of these edges down below. Yes, I did. And so we'll just delete that selection first, hit control tab to go back to vertex mode, select these here, and then snap them 
down to right there. There we go. So now things should line up perfectly when we shift D, duplicate this up, snap to right there, shift D, take it up, take it up, snap to there, and then do this one last time, snapping to right there, select everything, and W, remove doubles. You can see we removed 24 vertices, and so that's just perfect. And now, you know, if we hide this, we can see exactly what we've created which works really, really well. And so, you know, if we go back to our reference here, maybe go through our references, we can see this. And if we go through, let's see if we can find another angle. There we go. Now we can see that this here is actually um, a little different where around the edges here, or around the edge of the frame, it's solid, but then the inside is just kind of extruded around. And so let's go ahead and do that. And so the way that I'm gonna do it is I'm going to add in a new edge loop on the side of each one of these. Although let's go ahead and let's go into increment mode and I'm going to hit control R, add in an edge loop, take it all the way down. Let me change my system or my overlay mode real quick. I keep forgetting to do that as well. Okay, so we're going to take it all the way down and then hit G and control to take it up along the Z axis about like that. So that, well actually we want to take it down one more, and so this way we can ensure that it will always be exactly the same. Because if we were to say, you know, add in a, a loop right here, holding down control, we might get a little different spacing than on some other sections. And so by taking it all the way up, like that, and then moving it down one increment after the fact allows us to ensure consistency. There we go, because now what we'll go ahead and do is, well, let's see, how exactly do I want to do this? Uh, looking back at this, you can see we want to just take in everything else around it. And so we actually need to go in and first add in another edge loop right here, which again, make sure we've got the same depth, we'll take it all the way over and then back one more. And then what I want to do is go in and we want to select, I'm going to first just hit Shift H to show it only this, then we'll select only this and hit Shift H again, because now we can go ahead and select all of these areas. Oops. Okay, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and select all these areas here. We'll do this for each one. We're gonna hit X and delete faces. And then we're gonna select this top face here and this top face here, hit X, delete faces, and then we can alt right click on this edge, just like all of those, and hit X and delete faces. So now what we wanna go ahead and do is, actually, I have an even better way to do this, and this is to go ahead and select all of these faces as well, although we're not actually going to delete these ones yet. Instead, we are going to separate them out to another, well, no, actually, we can go ahead and just delete them. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and actually I am just going to hit P to separate these and the reason being is I want to test something using a, I'm going to also separate this out, I'm going to test something using a solidify modifier. So let's add in that solidify just from right here and then we want to go ahead and check the even thickness, high quality normals and then let's go ahead and enable this in edit mode so that we can actually see exactly what it's done. And there we go, just like that, we've basically created this system that otherwise would actually be rather difficult to model in a, an efficient time frame.
So there we go, now we can unhide everything, and you can see pretty much what we've done works out pretty darn well. Okay, now what I'm going to do so that we can start to see some of this difference in here is go ahead and go back into this tab, and we want to add in, say, two edge loops right here. We'll go back into vertex mode, we'll select this edge here, and we want to pull these back along the y-axis as we can see that this should be just kind of an arc back. We'll take this edge loop right here and a little bit further. We can kind of even out this transition by taking this back here and this one up here. Actually, no, we don't want to do that. And then we'll go ahead and select this edge here. We'll take it along the y-axis and then this one as well take those back. And there we go. I'm going to go and select this and hit uh, Control Shift Tab, switch to Vertex Snap, hit G, Y, and then snap it back to that one there. And then I'll, we'll actually be able to add in, we'll just basically extrude this here, which we can go ahead and do, just E to extrude and then right click to cancel the transformation, not the extrusion, but the transformation, and we'll hit S and Shift Y to scale it out on everything but the Y axis to do that. And what that'll basically do is start to create this kind of well joint here. I just add in a little extra detail. Okay, now let's go ahead and select the door panel, and we can see that we need to do one thing, and that is to bring the door panel actually all the way over to the side here. So we're gonna go ahead and create this ridge material, this ridge on it. So let's select this edge of the door, and we're just going to go ahead and bring it, we're just going to go into edge mode, and let's snap it right to that edge. That way, it's almost all the way back, but not quite. And then what I wanna do is to select all of the outside edges, or these ones here anyway, and then we're going to hit E to extrude, and we'll first take it along the Y axis, switch back into verte or increment mode, take it along the Z axis, one, or holding down control and shift. We'll go one, two, three, and then four. Looks to be about right. And then we'll deselect this center line here and this line here, and we'll take these back in one, One, two, three, and four. Okay, now you can see we need to move the door frame back in to right about there. Or actually about there should be just about perfect. So now we can go in and select th these perimeters and we'll just extrude it out along the Y axis, just like that. And we're not gonna do any more than that because uh, when we add in our subdivision surface modifier, we'll be able to add in this rounded effect very, very easily. And so uh, we're almost ready to come to a close here. And so let's go ahead and I'm not going to do any of the brackets on here, but let's just add in the four poles, which will be these, basically the locking mechanism. And so I'm just going to hit uh, Shift A to add in a new mesh. And on this, I'm going to just add in a cylinder. On the cylinder, let's hit F6. Let's change the vertice count to eight. We're gonna take the radius to 0.1 and the depth will go 10. And we do not want to cap the ends just yet. And that'll be okay, just like that. Now let's hit Control A, apply the rotation. Or actually, no, I wanna undo that and then hit Alt R to undo the rotation. And we're gonna hit Tab to go into edit mode. And then we'll just scale this way down to be right about there take this up along the z-axis to be about centered within the frame and then we want to move this one over to let's see we can see it's just over these uh, panel inserts see that looks about right we'll take this up so it's lined up basically with these here and then looking at this we can see maybe we want to go ahead and scale this up a couple notches maybe to be about right there and so then we'll scale it down along the z-axis to about right there, in fact. And that looks pretty good. So now what I'm gonna do is we'll add in our mirror modifier, and then we'll also add in an array 
Although we want to do the array before the mirror modifier, so we'll move it up. And then let's just take it out along the relative x offset to be centered pretty much right there. So it's basically centered on the door. That looks to be about perfect. And so there we go. Uh, we're going to go ahead and call that quits right at 30 minutes. Although actually I want to do one quick fix, and that is to raise this back panel up right here where it's too low. And so we'll just take it right up uh, to the same height as these. So hitting G and, and let's go to edge snap, G, Z, snap it up to right there. And now that's the same height. So now we're not having, we don't have a hole there either. Okay, so we're making really good progress. We've, you know, we've got a ways to go. There's a lot of detail work to do, but really good, good progress. And, you know, starting to feel pretty good about this. Oh, and just notice that our, we have an extra hinge on here. No, that our hinges have become messed up. And so I need to quickly figure out what happened there. Let's just go ahead and take the, the array modifier down until it fits where it's supposed to. Right about there is close enough. Or actually, no, it's not. Let's go ahead and make this exact. So we'll put this at 9.5. Looks like it's going to be 9.6. Yep, there we go. So I don't know what happened there, but somehow, you know, bumped it somewhere or another. But that's okay. Now that it's fixed, we'll go ahead and save it, and I will call it quits for the time being, and then see you again shortly on part three.